Nebrax is hungry like the wolf and ready to feast with Inferno Dragons about to burn this base up. He has brought 14 out of them and is ready to attack. But where will he pounce? Analyzing, here we see an eagle on the left. Concentration of Inferno towers on the top with a little bit of pushback from that air sweeper as well. Into it looks like he's going in from the top right. That's right, he's trying to take down this elephant, he's trying to take down those um, black mines right there with the blade now flying across and getting the connection in. There were already so many air traps, two red mines I think I counted, four black mines if I'm correct, which is already a lot of traps out of this base considering that this is an air follow-up. Yes, that is definitely very valuable already, and it also seems that the Queen Wongas have seen this entry and thought that it was strong enough to protect it, to invest some traps here to protect it, but then these streams, as you said, these traps, they won't be in the center of the base anymore. But we have seen Inferno Baby Dragon attacks fail, actually, especially from Ryuta falling very, very short on the first stay, but the core of the base. With so many Inferno Dragons, it can really feel like hurting cats, trying to keep them all within that Grand Warden's life aura. But it looks like Nebrax has done a perfect job of it with just enough spread to ensure that he takes down the entirety of the base and keeping them all topped off as best he can. Eagle Artillery is only getting shots at one or two Inferno Dragon at a time, and that is great burn value for Nebrax here. Still holding on to two Skeleton Spells for the back end, which will help him out a lot with that scatter shot. Yeah, the next thing has to go down, which is the defending king, because that king is protecting that eagle. Well, not that many of those Inferno Dragons survived the core, which means it's now hero time. Those heroes have to take down this back end. It does look quite scary, but he has the Royal Champion still left to place. He does, and he has the Warden as well in the mix. In fact, the Warden plus the uh, Owl were able to take out the enemy queen already. Now, double skellies deployed to distract the defenses. Wow, and we see double giant bombs and double skelly traps. Will it be enough, Woody? Two abilities still have to use the Archer Queen and Royal Champion. They get a stab at the bottom corner. They are taking down that scatter shot, even though there are big traps. Giant bomb, skeleton stopping him. But a toss of that shield is all he needs. Nebrax making his way to the last defenses as the crowd starts to stare in awe. This world champion aspirant might have a shot. 40 seconds left, and it looks like he is going to take it all down into. Everything is relying on this queen, and he is cheering. He is is hype. The audience is as well. And with that ability, he is going to collect the first three star of this match. Queen and Archers are going to be enough to take down the last couple of buildings. And we know normally the strategy is quite quick, but there's only 15 seconds left, but it's going to be enough to take down the first base. Congratulations. Fine as a frog here and fit as a fiddle, as my papa used to say, Kazuma is ready to fight! He is fixed with a Queen Charge Lalo. Superb base design here by Rikirez, giving him some time to think about how he wants to start this hit. Exterior air defenses, not well protected by walls, just the one on the top side up there. But where will Kazuma start with this Queen Charge? That is the question. Lots of cannons along the outside of the base. Just at the very bottom there, he spots a little bit of a gap. That'll give him an easy opportunity to take down that souped-up Archer Tower, spreading some serious fire in there. Kazuma will also find that air defense and a stab at the Town Hall. Coco Loon moving in first to try to catch any seeking air mines that there may be. That's right, so far there's no black mines whatsoever, and I'm still waiting kind of for him to maybe switch the siege machine, because interesting enough, you see normally those charges. Oh my god, this <laughs> um, from the other side if the Lord Archer is used, but him so far charging that town or the Queen dropping quite low. But for now, he is not making any moves with the King, with the siege, anything else. So far he's just waiting for his Queen to charge further around this town hall. Yes, around she is charging indeed, and I have we get to we have yet to see what he is actually planning there. She might step in now to get the build out. Yes, wow. so she will eventually take care of that town hall. Indeed, he has a uh, brought a um, a lock. Oh, there we go, the log launcher into the town hall with the earthquake. Something they must have been practicing. We've seen it before, and it will open all the way to this uh, single targeting Inferno, but the Queen is now in a little bit of a problem, and there we see a perfectly deployed free spell to hold back the damage of the Rocket Dunes and the single Inferno, Woody. 
Shuts it down, and the Log Launcher gets some overkill on the backside of that Town Hall as well, finishing off the Inferno Tower. And wow, the Rocket Loon catches two <laughs> Seeking Air Mines. Excellent news for those healers who will stay well protected on the top side. That Archer Queen has squashed that Town Hall like a chicken on a June bug. And we will see even more hero power at the left corner as another Headhunter gets stacked on top to take care of that. And the Archer Queen multi-tower and multi-target Inferno is burning up these heroes. And that's why he's going to use the Eternal Tome to protect. Kazuma is holding on to that Lava Hound and Balloon's in his back pocket, ready to drop him on the top corner. Itsu, here he goes! He's coming in from the top side with that lot of the heroes still going strong on both sides of the space. The Queen and the Royal Chamber on the left side. The Queen has to be turned invisible to keep her alive, but the loons are coming from the top side. Remember, there is no warden ability left anymore for those loons, so they're having less hit points. The Queen having her ability to finish off the last team. Yes! The crowd is going crazy because this is going to be the next race that with still one race to place. Yes, a perfectly placed rage there once again. The time is going to be quite interesting to see as um, Tribe Gaming have had a rather slow attack, but also this one is running lower and lower on time. I think they might be almost even after this. In fact, I think Tribe Gaming was just like two or three seconds quicker than that. But in the end, it, what matters is the number of stars and Kazuma got Three of them, just what they needed, and very cool to see. Here in the final, the very first time in the World Championship. We hear nothing but silence in the arena. The tension is high, not only be in between the crowd here, but also for Kronos as he's coming in with the skeleton donut. And we see 35 Hawk Riders! Would you love to see that, don't you? I sure do, but I love even more the most delicious way to carve out the center. That Skelly Donut brings some rapid unplanned disassembly for MS Stars of the Queen Walker Stevity. Hives Kronos begins in the bottom corner of the space where he finds a scatter shot and an enemy Archer Queen. Tesla popping up there as well, and he has got no healers to boost up this hero dive. Hoping beyond hope that they can get as much damage as necessary. And look at that skeleton trap is gonna trigger as well. And what's that a wall wrecker out on the left side there, Itsu? That's right, trying to get the wall right here towards the town hall because we have seen now so many air traps around the town hall to get that protected. At the same time now, he's stalling with the Hawk Riders. There is a ton of Hawk Riders swarming this base straight into the bomb tower and he's using the ward ability perfectly to protect all of them going further into the space with heal spells left to spare. You can still get those Hawk Riders safe through the base if there's not too many spring traps. Yes, and it is looking good so far, even though he's got a big split there on the Hawk Riders, and he's he deciding to heal on the left side as he has got nothing for the right anymore, and he will have to rely on the female heroes once again. We've seen it before, but the Hawk Riders with another heal spell could get him through this multi-inferno, and then there's not too much left in this base, Woody. Returning to the fight like a phoenix from the ashes. They are topped off again, going back into the top corner of this base. Kronos having a bit of difficulty with this multi-inferno tower, though, and you are right, Maxi. It is just going to be these heroes who are left to try to finish off a base with so many walls up top. Big problem for this Archer Queen, who has so often gotten stuck with defenses still firing away at her. Pause of the shield there, Royal Champion making it away to the back end, and cheers from the crowd as they feel confident with a minute left for clean of this should be an easy three-star. Kronos with a master stroke. This base is broke, Itsu. Those heroes on the back end, they always look so, so strong, especially the pros always keep them alive. It's really crazy with how consistent they are with always making sure in those hero dives, the queen is always surviving with those Hawk Riders. The Royal Champion survive. All of those heroes now finish off the base for the next three star in this match at Tribe Gaming. Gaku is wild as a wet hen and clocking for a win. Back to the skies with a lava hound and balloons. It's going to be that queen charge to start things off. Kicking it in the left side corner where yet he's going to get a little bit of funneling done on that archer tower as the queen prepares for her next strike. Gaku is holding on to his device with all of his might as the tribe army starts stomping and cheering for a defense in the arena. They've been able to do it before, but will it happen again here now against Kronos' base with a battle blimp at the ready? It looks like he might be able to swap that out if his town hall goes down, or will he get an interesting attack from the top or bottom side, Itsu? 
Yeah, he's trying to really get that Town Hall out early at the same time, though having to invest that invisibility spell to make sure the Queen is going in means one less spell for the safety of that Queen. But the King is trying to get forced into that eager compartment, making sure that it's going to stay strong with that Warden. The Warden is going to be combined with that Blimp right into the heart of the space, right into the center. And wow, the King going to the outside, but so well protected there. Why the Warden ability? And oh my god! Oh, yes. oh no! The he gets it! What a beautiful way to start! The Blimp catches the, his camp hot by the Warden ability, using the clone spell to take out two Inferno Towers. And even though the King walked, he's got everything he wanted, Woody. Massive assault in the interior, and Gaku is like a dog with a bone as he is able to pick apart the top side. That clay castle lava hound is not going to cause any trouble for the queen at all as we look now down to the bottom side of the base where the main stage of the attack moves on in the grand ward's gonna be able to swap off from that right corner and go help out those loons maybe he's only on one right now but the free spell is going to be enough support that they will finish off all the remaining defenses in that corner and cleanup is going to be super easy a minute and 10 seconds left for gaku he has just flattened this base into none of those teams are holding back any secret strategies anymore what it genius idea to send this blimp right into the core of the base because he knows there's a lot of traps cloning those dunes taking down two of the core defenses in there and denying the pathing into the core and triggering the traps nicely and this means both teams are starting with those three stars twice back to back the next attacker is live it is rikiris and he has to make sure that this attack is going as flawless as possible for him to get his team the next three star on the board using the bad spell again to tank for those dunes to try to make sure there's no black mines getting this blimp out of the air and it's going to connect getting wait a second it's uh there's black mines but they were too late it seems like the town hall should go down, turning the storages invisible to make sure those sneaky goblins have no other choice than taking down Whoa. the town hall. It's going down. He was a little scared there, you could tell, but it, uh, he, I think he mixed up a little bit the normal goblins and the sneaky goblins. Probably wouldn't have even needed to freeze because there was no splash damage around that area, but he got the job done. That is the most important thing. And as he is coming in with his heroes and the support of the skeleton traps, the crowd, the tribe army, as uh, Woody called it, is already going wild again because now it's going to be decided if he can get another triple. Yeah, Sneaky Gob's got that town hall like they were shooting fish in a barrel. If the barrel were on fire, the fish shot back and exploded when they died. Still, Rikires is going to have a lot of force left on this left side. The big hero assault will now commence. Super splash damage coming on in from both the multi-target Inferno and Eagle Artillery, as also a CC Hound will start to distract this poor queen. Going to be taking shots from the Eagle Artillery. She will be going down soon. A breeze is off on the enemy queen. Rikiris will be able to finish her off with just a few more shots. There it is, and he's ready to start the Loon Assault. Yes. Yeah, and uh, the big question mark to me is he wanted to have way more value because there is a jump spell in the core, and that queen is completely on her own, if I see this correctly, while the ice sound is flying across, but that's two spell slots less, which he has, using the water to protect those loons at the core. Red mines are coming up, and the loons are just powering through. And he still has a queen that got protected by the warden, but he also has a scatter shot that he has yet to face, and a enemy royal champion that he will have to send some headhunters to. And this is not going according to plan, as it seems he is falling short. Concern in the audience as they start to cheer it mixed on both sides. Offense and defense both mixed and confused as to whether this is going to work. At the moment right now, Rikires, having missed two strikes already in the championship, looks to be dropping on a third. By the planning of his own strike, he is falling so short. Rikires is boiling in his own soup. You can see on his face the concern that this will leave the rest of the tribe army in. Only a 70% for him so far. And the Queen Walkers, Stephanie, are going to be surging ahead, Itsu. 
Yeah, I would love to see the range of the clan castle because my guess would be that the blimp would have lured that clan castle if it would have connected towards the town hall. But the double black man really denied that. And with that, the hound was staying inside that clan castle, never was lured out, and he had to face the clan castle inside the base, which was keeping the queen busy for so long. And with that, that jump spell was in the end, unfortunately, completely swagged because he had no good use of that. And this gives Queen Walkers another defense, great base building, and great, or even better, pl um, trap placement overall. I absolutely agree. I think that the, def uh, the defense here was mainly due to the uh, great base building there. But let's take a little listen to the audio replay of the team. All good world championship, where we have the next attacker ready. It's going to be none other than... STARS! He is thick as a brick, ready to show us a trick. Heating up like a supernova, he brought two hounds and 26 loons. That means it's gonna be a hero dive to kick things off. Terrifying triumvirate of Inferno Towers surrounding the core there, where Nebrax has built his clan castle and has those air sweepers ready to push out. It's gonna be the Skelly Donut to get a little bit of chip damage here in the middle. Can he get that clan castle down? Also targeting an air defense and a multi-inferno, bringing in those bats with perfect invisibility into. That's right, so far the invisibility spells are on point. The clan castle going down, another invisibility spell, and the Mortem Tower him. is next. Both key defenses are out, and now everything is relying on his heroes. He even brought a golem, a Vagrid, to support them. And not only that, the Siege Machine is there as well. The Log Launcher rolling some logs into that base to take down as many defenses as possible. Yes, this time he could not hold on to one of those invisibility spells because he saw that it was getting close there with the multi inferno. Now, the queen also taking on this enemy king is not a problem because he used his queen ability, so getting through that fairly quickly, taking out the eagle artillery, and this hero dive is still going strong. Over on the right side, the golem goes down next, blocking shots from a scatter shot. Expo and an archer tower as the royal champion will now go deep inside, penetrating with that huge spear and thrusting it into Nebrax's side. She's going to take it down and get another round off with the support of that log launcher as well. Archer Queen on the defense is like, what is going on? Taking logs to the face. She is now finally going to be able to fight back as the rocket loom will pop out and two abominable snow people will now slap her around. She is down. She is down indeed while his heroes are still alive. The queen not even use her ability yet. And it feels like with that Royal Champion taking down another key defense behind the town hall. Everything relies now. Where is that tornado trap? Is it going to deny that town hall or those loons? There's wow, the tornado nice trap. Timing. But the ward ability is covering everything. Once again, a perfectly used um, Warden ability there, completely denying the Tornado Trap, and he even delays the heal spell because he knew he timed that perfectly. The Headhunters take out the enemy Royal Champion, and there is nothing anymore that poses a threat! Two stars, is Lalo, and that should be the next race star for the Queen Walkers! Loons scurry out of that Gigabomb like a rat! a drain pipe and they are so super safe on the final strike of this base just an air defense to try to pop them down one by one but that is not a winning play here balloons cannot be stopped even with this little bitty tower defense on the bottom side stars will be able to finish off this base with 20 something seconds left 100 percent for stars Exco Sist coming in with another Queen Charge Lalo. And we have seen he has chosen to use a Battle Blimp as the Siege Machine. In this one, he has also brought a Valkyrie, which makes me think that he is going to use his kick into a compartment where he expects some skeletons. Nice use of the two balloons taken out, not just the Archer Tower, but also this um, Tesla there as the Blimp is making its way into the Eagle Artillery with the help of the Rage. It is luring out the Clan Castle, taking out the defenses, and getting the value he intended. Super fast strike in the top and left side corners now as Exocyst, the Executor, looks for even more value on that left lane. He finds a big shot with that Archer Queen taking down the enemy CC. He's just taking a little bit of zap damage from that Tesla pop over on the left side. But we also get a Loon out there looking for some Seeking Air Mines. Don't find any, and so that should be a safe entry point for those healers. 
We do get a little bit of chip damage on that Archer Tower. Not quite finishing it off yet. Exocyst is spending a lot of time in this setup, and that's going to pay dividends later on when the Lalo, with even a Dragon Rider added on, are going to be able to sweep through the base with great pathing. Two huge chunks of this base have been taken out. Yeah, and there's just so many traps in this compartment. You see already the Tesla on the outside. We saw now two skeleton traps really keeping their queen busy for quite some time. But well, the king is trying to push around this top side into the base. We have the tornado trap over there as well. The queen is getting rotated and a lot of damage. There's the queen ability. Oh, no, oh, no, and the no, queen no. is staying alive for a little bit longer. That Dragon Rider just came in clutch. I thought he was for sure planning for this king to take out the multi-inferno, but he had a plan B. Sends in the Dragon Rider, which will protect the healers that are now within the range of this multi-inferno. While the Lalo is coming in on the right side, Royal Champion taking out the other multi-inferno instead. And all of this attack is going to converge on the most important building of the base, the Town Hall. Can he get it, Woody? I might call this a risky attack if it weren't for the fact that Exocyst is among the best moving in now on the town hall with the queen she is going to go through an alleyway of annihilation still so much firepower coming in at her but with the invisibility spell last one used by Exocyst, she will succeed pursues her target locks on firing away oh. can she be denied no way the defense has hold Exocyst, the one star Defense for Yuna is supreme! What a defense, just again, incredible base building by Queen Walkers, forcing so, so many spills, and the Queen ability in this left compartment. We have the King still trying, but this Town Hall is going to keep staying up, because without the spells, without the Queen ability, this Town Hall staying alive, and this is the first one star, not only in the final, in the entire World Championship of this weekend. Well, I think we're going into the next attack. We are ready to wreck, so give them heck! It's Queen Walkers up next, and Klaus is in. That would just need two stars, but I feel like just looking at the army, he will go all in to make this work. No poison, selling me another skeleton donut, which he tries to pull off with even more troops to really enforce this hero dive because there is even healers in the mix to make this an even crazier Klaus classic plan. Yes, four healers. Usually we often bring five of them, but this is actually a warden log. He has four invisibility spells as well. A bat spell and a rage and a skelly. Does this going to Yeah, it is going to be a skelly log, but he makes the inferno tower invisible with the first one. So let's see if he has enough uh, bats spawning onto this multi-targeting Inferno, but so far it looks like wow. he does, and even though he misplaces the first one, I mean, if you misplace one of them, you want to misplace the first one. So, so much happening at the first, at the same time here. Uh, he has deployed the Flame Flinger with the Warden at the bottom side, Woody, and seems to be activating this Town Hall in a second. Yeah, Klaus is going slow and steady. He's like a kid in a candy store, just gobbling up all of his favorite treats, finding that clan castle in the middle, even getting a little bit of additional damage off on that Inferno Tower as well. The single is still up, but we've got a long-range Warden Walk now, grabbing that first star alongside a Flame Flinger. Superb artillery as Klaus is just raining down Hellfire from above. But got to keep in mind that there is a clock to keep it track of. With a minute and 49, we need to go quick with this Hound and 24 Balloons. He's brought two haste spells to do it and lots of hero space, but the Queen Walker Stephanie have timed out before. Can they prevent that from happening again in two? Yeah, that's the big question. While right now, time is ticking. I mean, he took an entire long um, one walk there to take down the tunnel, make sure that this tunnel is going down. So maybe it is indeed just a really, really concentrated two-star approach with options for those three stars because this town hall had no chance of not going down. Why now his heroes are diving to this compartment and trying to take down as much of the space as possible while the healers and the golem have complete different plans oh, no. than his heroes. Yes, the, the golem actually went into the town hall compartment to take out this wizard tower. Wow. And the, the, I mean, the healers are deciding to come back. They went for this golem for a second. Oh, he actually brought another golem in the flame flinger that is now 
joining up with his queen while the Elas transfer transfer to the Royal Champion. So he's got a little Royal Champion walk going on. He's got a little queen dive with the warden going on, and he's got a Lalo going on. There's so much going on, Woody. What are you What are you witnessing at this point? I'm witnessing a very good decision if someone can analyze this attack later on, because <laughs> Klaus has just brought an icy avalanche of destruction onto the space with ice golems bringing in an ice hound playing in the flames it is a story to remember i couldn't even keep track of it across the whole time but what a marathon march across this base 15 seconds left and still holding on to that royal champion ability ready to use it at a moment's notice to ensure that the last little buildings go down but only eight seconds left he's going on a furious finish to the very end five four three two one gets it just in time <laughs> Klaus, like the wrath of God, he will destroy the cities of your land and tear down all your strongholds. What an incredible finish there, waiting for the skeleton trap to go down so the Royal Champion Shield actually can go to buildings because remember, yes. all of the defenses are down. The Royal Champion Shield is even going to go to skeleton trap. So if you might have not known that, he would have used the Royal Champ too early and would have failed not getting the three star. But Klaus, he, he knows what he's doing. He is Klaus and he's getting this next three star in, which was super impressive. So I feel like we should rewatch a couple of those seconds of this attack to see what it looked like in the mind of a genius. <laughs> a genius he is indeed the way he, you see it there. He saw the skeleton trap and then the Royal Champion Shield used right before, so it could take out the buildings as well. He just knows every single bit about this game. Pointing at the Queen Walker's Stephanie logo there that he has on his jacket. We see the arena, we see the tension, but for this match, it seems to have been decided in Queen Walker's favor. Even though we have two attacks to go, there is a three-star differential between both of those teams. And the last attacker, Fluxy, you can see him here all on the left. Now we see just him on the big screen is going to be the finishing attacker for Tribe Gaming once more. And I think it would be good for their morale if he could put on another three star. So let's see what he got. Let's give it up once more for Fluxy. It is tough to feel good if you're Fluxy right now, knowing that even a triple only ties up the star race against the Queen Walker Stephanie. But nevertheless, he is moving on in. Swiggity swooty, Fluxy coming for that booty. On the bottom corner, the Archer Queen starts the charge off, ready to drop the healers anytime they are needed. He gets the CC pull as well, and with a rage over in the right side corner, gets a beautiful stab in the Indy compartment, but doesn't take down the Royal Champion. Just a good stab at those defenses so far, Itsu. That's right, but it means that the Expo and the Royal Champion are going to stay alive with that, uh, not Bloom, but a Slammer. Well, he's now taking down the Clan Gus in a really nice location because there is literally no damage on this Queen staying safe and just charging that town. But we have to be careful. Queen Walkers love to have Black Mines around that town or compartment to defend Blimps, Georges, whatever is coming near to their town hall. And that is exactly why Fluxy is coming in with a Coco Nut Balloon to make sure he can find some of those black mines. Maybe sending in yet another one to the other cannon there. Missing in the first one, sending in the third. And that, uh, yeah, we have to see if he can find some. But I think the value of this blimp was actually pretty good. He, he missed the Royal Champion by just a little bit, but still got the Eagle Artillery and some defenses around that. He didn't find a single Seeking Airman, if I'm not mistaken, Woody. And coming in with the Dragon Riders right next to the Town Hall compartment now. Dragon Riders get a lot of protection from that Grand Warden using the Eternal Tome right at the perfectly timed moment there. Fluxy adds on those Headhunters to stab down the enemy Queen as well, and there is no problem at all for this entry point. It's just going to be a terrifying mid section where we've got three Inferno Towers still standing up and ready to burn away those poor dragons. Dragon Riders, excuse me. We also have Air Sweepers pushing them back, trying to slow things down. Single locks onto the Royal Champion. Can she get some help here? That's the big question, if there is any help whatsoever for that. Because if it's like there's not too many Dragon Riders left alive, one at the Eagle with the Royal Champ together. The core is getting taken care of with more Rat Mines. Air wow. traps are coming in. Oh, the, the Queen maybe can somehow finish that with the Warden and the Royal Champion. 
Boom! Opens up that compartment. And this is going to be the three star for Fluxy finishing it off. He pops the Queen ability. King and Royal, uh, Royal Champion still doing good work. Only 30 seconds on the clock, but only a couple of buildings left. And what a guy. No nerves. I mean, this wasn't a decisive attack uh, anymore, most likely. But still, he just showed what he's got. And that tribe are definitely not done for today. Yuda, the final strike, the last dagger at the throat of Tribe Gaming. One star here wins the match and results in a bracket reset for the grand finals showdown. Early Eternal Tome on that battle blimp will send it all the way into the center of the base as far as he wants it to go, really. It's that clone and rage as well, and that's going to be a huge drop on the Eagle Artillery and so many clear defenses focused on. Finally gets another hit even on that wizard tower. And what else? And what else is a good question because we have now more more loons coming in. And at the same time though, the sweeper are pushing them back slowly. But we have this one. the warden <laughs> going strong and trying wow. to take down with his owl beatings left and right while this queen is nicely taking care of this lava hound, taking care of the lava pups, and then with the king going to try to get that town hall. The warden actually took out the royal champion there with the help of the owl. Incredible stuff there. Now the skeletons to protect the king and get uh, a tanking, provide some tanking for these uh, a sh couple of scatter shot shots as well as the queen. She's firing away at skeletons while the king can make his way towards her. He is converging with the royal champion and we call that a successful hero dive. But it's still going to be all about whether the queen can make it to the town hall but i mean the king is just like ah come on queen i'm going to help you let's just do it all together we're about to see the power of teamwork as yuda 14 crosses the one star threshold and will win the war for the queen walker stephanie they will go to a bracket reset guaranteed but can he pull off the three star and get that triple against tribe We'll find out as the Queen continues her path of destruction all along the bottom side of the base now, taking down air defenses, wizard towers, so many defenses that could cause trouble for this Law Loon on the back end. But here we go with the main thrust at the right corner. He's going for it, Itsu. We have the Loon swarming the last compartment. Well, the hay spell is leading everything in there. Queen ability not even used, and we have Utah getting the three star, which is incredibly important, I feel, because the momentum is all on your and their side. Swags the queen ability, too. Yes, we're all in this together. It's what the heroes.